multi-head wire here so this would link into your control circuit to start your product feeding conveyor system. Down here is another multi-core which has three output signals which are volt free signals which are to tell the wrapping machine the product has dropped it will tell the machine if it's an overweight and it will also tell the machine that the system is healthy and is able to drop products. There is one input which is uh, from a volt free in your wrapping machine so when this switch is closed the multi head weigher will drop products and begin to weigh and we will simulate this when we start running the machine in a few moments. Other cables are multi-core to the HMI, a simple screw uh, into position. Okay, so when the machine is first powered up, this is the screen you'll see uh, when you begin to operate the machine. What it's saying here is, before running the machine, please press zero key, which basically will allow the machine to zero itself out. So if press zero, we will see the machine calibrating itself. When the green light goes off, it means it's now happy and zero. At the end of a product run, if you press the clear, it will basically run all the feeders and the buckets swept to the machine of any product. Pressing stop will stop the clear out mode. Uh, you can use that for cleaning as well. For the first part of the menu, we've got this run selection. If we press run, it takes us to a screen which will be your normal running operation screen. The screen gives us an overview of the various weighing heads you've got uh, around the weigher and information regarding the particular product you're currently running. As we can see here, we're running program number one and as we've got um, very limited information in this machine, the target weight, the upper limits and lower limits are all set at one gram. In real reality, we'd have a target weight, which is the weight of your pack. Upper and lower limits can be set as so that uh, either the machine can uh, reject overweights and obviously if it's low, li low limits, it will not drop a product until it's over that limit. Running totals of the average bucket weight and the actual speed of the machine will be displayed as the machine runs. We can set a target speed and also we can uh, set some speeds or amplitudes as you were, if you will of the um, main feeder and the linear feeders. Those are the vibrating plates at the top of the machine. If we put the machine into run, we can put the machine to operate. I can simulate a signal from the bagging machine. The bagging machine is now stopped, stops feeding. The bagging machine goes back on. The machine will begin to feed again. On the main screen we can see that although we've got uh, no particular weight set in, the average bucket weight is 2.1 grams. And we're actually running a speed of 10. We can change some of the values of the amplitude and the machine speed by pressing the up and down keys. You can hear the machine now going faster. screen here we can see several different colours. A colour that's in grey means the head is healthy and trying to feed. A bucket that's in red is in fact 
full, or dare I say, has enough weight in it to be dropping. Anything that's blue is no, it's not currently being used, and yellow means we have an overweight, and pink means we have a lightweight. And we can simulate that by pressing on the heads to show overweight. Also, I can lift the head to show it being underweight. Ideally in operation, your heads will be grey, red and blue. When the machine's running, we can use these keys here. At the moment we've highlighted linear feeder amplitude and we can see all the values going up for each feeder. There is a feeder for each weighing head. We can adjust these up and down while we're running, but these values won't be stored. The actual values in the program, which we'll go through shortly, are the stored values which will be reproduced every time we bring that program number up. If we switch the machine back on, the machine will begin to run. We can also pause the machine, take it out of production and return to the main menu. So if we select number two on the main screen, we go into manual operation. Again we get an overview of the equipment with the numbers of heads and down this side we've got various functions on which we can manually operate. We can run a cycle just once, we can run continuously, we can run the linear feeders, the main feeder, we can also use the feed, the weight and the collect buckets and we can basically select whichever one we would like to do so for a cycle run we select cycle run and press the key in the middle and all the heads begin to run. We can have a continuous run and all the heads will start to run. Sorry, so if we press the stop key we stop that feeding and again we can run all the weight bins Again, we can run and open the collection bins. Again, we can run the feeders, which you can hear the vibration. And then we can return back to the main menu. Setting a program up is option three on the main menu. And the password is one, 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 one. Press the enter key. Here we can select the target weight. Again, these will be the programs or the values that will be automatically recalled once you open program selection one in the main screen. Again, we can set these upper and lower limits to give us overweight and underweights. And we can copy programs if we have very similar programs in terms of weights and limits and so on and so forth. To get into the further parameters for each program, press parameter set. And now we have a whole range of various options for which we may or may not want to adjust to suit the product. First of all, we've got the program number. I think you can have up to 100 programs in this, or 99 programs, sorry, in this machine. Next, we have the main feeder amplitude. Again, this is the, the uh, ferocity of the vibration of the main feeder. For heavy products, this one may want to be a higher number. For lighter products, a lower number. The linear feed amplitude is very similar. Again, for heavy or light products, heavy products, uh, a higher number, Lighter products, a lower number. If you're getting lots of overweights, perhaps you might need to reduce this figure. As the linear feeder runs, it runs for this value, which is in milliseconds. So that's two seconds which it will run every time it wants to feed product into one of the buckets. This is the feeding bucket delay. 
and this is basically the delay in which the feeding bucket, once it sees that it's got product into it, will delay between allowing it to drop into the weighing bucket. The weighing bucket delay is the time in which the weighing bucket will then wait until it tells the feeding bucket to feed in again. Basically the reason for this is once the weighing bucket has opened up it wants to make sure that all the products has dropped out before allowing it to feed in again. Um, this CB delay is for um, machines with a third bucket, a collection bucket which we don't have. A product number which could be input which can be um, perhaps assigned to maybe an order number or something of that description. It's, it's not terribly important for um, the actual run of the machine. Our target weight, upper and lower limits, of course depend on what the target weight of the bag needs to be and again your over and under rejects. A target speed for the machine, the optimum speed at which you will want to run. Uh, don't forget speed can also affect accuracy so when se selecting a speed um, it's sometimes worth thinking about the, the best speed to get the best accuracy given your upper and lower limits above. Uh, the discharge delay time is a signal time between the bagger wanting to, sorry, between the weighing machine dropping a product and telling the bagging machine that that product has been dropped. Again, this number is in milliseconds. That signal is also on for a very short time, it's a pulse signal and it's here shown to be on for 10 milliseconds. The zero interval is the time in minutes between the machine auto zeroing. So every 10 minutes this machine will do an auto zero cycle and use that value for the next 10 minutes. Again that can be set between 1 and 99 minutes. Press page down to go to the further product parameters. The bias weight is an offset weight you may want to uh, put onto each of the weigh heads. For example, say uh, you had a very noisy product and you lined the buckets with some sort of um, plastic coating to take the noise away, then you may add some extra weight to the buckets. The bias weight can be used to offset that. The no load weight is a value of which the buckets will not recognise any weight until it has exceeded this value. In this case it's 10% of the target weight. The no select looks at each of the individual buckets and looks at how often they are used. If a bucket has not been used for the no select period, as in 1000 operations, the machine will force it to work to prove that it's still operational. This may affect the product at the time, you may get a low weight or overweight bag, but then the head will go into alarm and error. The feed time is the delay time between the sensors at the top of the machine seeing product move away and then calling for the feeding system to begin to operate. The feed times can be used to use buckets more than once to make an accumulated large bag in the bagging machine. For example, if we had each bucket weighing 50 grams and we had feed times as two, it would drop 100 grams into a pack. As feed times are at one, at the moment we would drop 25 grams. These FB, WB and CB motor patterns are factory defaults and preset and should not be changed. AFC stands for Auto Feeder Control and can be used to um, monitor and allow the machine to change its operation depending upon the amount of product that it's getting from the feeding system. This can be done in two ways using AFCT or AFCI. AFCT is using the total number of buckets, AFCI is using individual buckets. There is some uh, further information in the manual because it uses some uh, mathematical formulas to work out 
the feeding times depend upon your own factory conditions to work out these various values. So I'm not going to go through this anymore because without a bagger and a feeding system it would be very hard to, to describe. Finally there is this stagger mode. Again in the manual you have various settings and what stagger mode enables you to do is tune the machine if you are getting jam ups in the feed tube between the weighing machine and the bagging machine. Stagger mode should be at zero as default however if you're dropping large amounts of products and it's starting to jam you may want to use stagger mode. To change any of the parameters we see here for example let's change the feed time we can highlight the feed time by pressing on it you'll see the number there highlighted and we then use the keypad to change the number press enter and that value is then stored in the machine we could then go on to change any other value that we wish to choose however we will put the feed time back to its original value that is now stored in the machine so selecting number five on the main screen calibration again it asks for the password which is one 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 press the enter key and we go into the main calibration screen where first of all it asks us to put in the bucket number one to calibrate number six press enter and you'll see the machine now wanting to zero itself out as you can see the closer to zero grams we get it's the closer to zero that we want to be okay so what we do now is we accept by pressing the enter key and it shows now we want to be full we place the test weight on the head it happens to be this one here it's a one kilo test weight and if we press enter again on the screen it should read the weigh head at this point we've set zero and now this is the full scale reading with the test weight on if we remove the test weight we're going back to, to zero again the head is now calibrated we can then do another head if we so wish by pressing the next head number seven enter again it's going through at zero by pressing enter we want to go to full scale place the weight on the next head and pressing enter on the screen again we can see we've got a thousand grams the head is now calibrated selecting number six on the main menu is system setup the password for this is two 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 two, two and press enter and we've got various functions now we can set which are um, not product specific but machine specific of course see the date and time uh, fairly straightforward this collect is saying uh, if this was a set at one it means we have collection buckets on the machine which we don't so it's at zero this optim optimum uh, function is the machine's internal um, uh, number if you will between 0 and 20 of how well it's performing apparently the optimum number when it's operational is 12 this number will actually change uh, as it op operates however you can also change it yourself so apparently 12 is the uh, optimum number um, so it tells me in the manual now the um, acceptance times is um, for example, say you had a, gra a packet that was 50 grams and the machine could not make up 50 grams from the buckets but it could make 52 grams, it would accept it. So this number can be changed to allow yourself a little bit more leniency, particularly if you've got large products being weighed. So if you change it to 4, it would allow, say, 54 grams to be passed. Okay, the default is 2. Password number 1 is 111111. If you press this key, you can change that, but we don't want to. Okay, so we'll just accept that. The motor of FB, CB, and WB are all internal 
factory preset values of uh, various preset um, patterns the motor will run through. Here's, for example, the weighing bucket motor. Um, it's not suggested that you change any of these values, these are uh, factory default values. Uh, however, these may be uh, used by the machine commission engineers to finely tune. Again, there are several pages of this. Press and return, go back to that, the main setting screen. Lamp uh, set at zero means that the screen is always lit. If you put lamp to one, it will go into a screen saver mode after 60 seconds. Touch screen calibration. Again, it allows you to, to, to calibrate the screen. Again, this is um, in more detail in the manual about how to do this. You need to have a touch screen pen and also be able to uh, input the correct uh, password. Then we've got Enforce. Um, in operation, if the machine cannot make up the desired weight for any reason whilst in operation, it will op automatically make sure seven buckets drop the product to begin um, almost like at the, the next cycle so it can correct itself. This number can be changed. Again, it's a factory default setting that suggests it has been the optimum setting. Trigger ways can be changed between a number of one and four and the trigger ways allow you to set the machine so the various input and output signals which are on the uh, external cables for the various functions can be changed to provide you with a, perhaps a slightly different method of operation. Again this is up to yourself, there's more detail in the manual and it depends upon what sort of feeding and bagging system you have connected to your weighing machine. The filter section again is the internal weighing system's optimum value for accuracy and speed of weighing. Again this can be changed to get a faster speed weighing but then accuracy is reduced so it sets a one as being the optimum. Password 2 can be changed, this is the password to get actually into the system settings. And finally language, there are three languages by default, English being language number one. The other two languages can be uh, s selected and it gives you more information in the manual about what languages they are. Press and return gets us out of this screen and back to the main screen.